Yep, I'm naked sailing. Pure freedom, my friends. But before I got to set myself free this way, I had some issues to deal with. Like paying the fee to stay longer at Marina Lanzarote. I'm probably repeating myself when I say how great this place is, but it is. So I think it's time to introduce you to some of the folks that work here. Buenos días. Hola, oh, Rafa. Hola, buenos días. ¿Qué tal? Aquí estamos. Que vamos a recibir un barco que está entrando en la marina. ¿Dónde es el barco? Pues ahí está. Ah, ok. Y nada, vamos a recibirlo en el pantalón acá. Hello. Good morning, Tanya. Hey, it's Carlos. Hi, Hello. Uh, I have to introduce these people here from Marina. Hello. Lanzarote, they're really cool. Hey. That's Tanya, that's Carlos. Hello. You speak great English. And she speaks how many languages? Eight. Japanese, Mandarin. <laughs> uh, I speak uh, Spanish, English, Dutch, German, and French a little bit. And why do you speak so many languages? Why? Uh, because of work. Um, working in tourism, it's necessary to uh, speak so many languages. Yeah. For all of you, one language speaking. Uh, people out there can take a lesson from Tanya and she speaks them perfectly. I was born in Germany, grown up in Holland, and I've lived since uh, 22 years here in Spain. Carlos is super cool. And Carlos, where are you from? I am from Cuba. And how come you speak such good English? I went on college and yeah. studied at Prague a lot. And you're also doing a sailing license, right? Yeah, I am doing a YA license. Yeah, must be. Cool. And we must not forget Laura. Hello! <laughs> really cool here too, helping out. How many languages do you speak, Laura? Four uh, languages. <laughs> you do? Si. Sí. Okay. <laughs> no. Francais, anglais, italien, espagnol. Ah, italien. Cool. cool. I'm coming here to stay here an extra month. Okay. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jimmy who's running the little ship handler store here, which is great because they have lots of stuff that um, for, for the boat and you don't have to go far. That's another cool thing about Marina Landorg. The people are staff are cool, they rent out charter boats here in Bongo. And Jimmy's here to help out. So he got me this uh, what you call it? Circuit breaker, not really a circuit breaker, for my general electricity. And we couldn't find it and he got it for me overnight. So it's really I'm really happy. And thanks Jimmy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I replaced my broken circuit switch and hit on a few more projects. On the way down from Cartagena, when we got uh, stirred around quite a bit and waves were coming over the deck of Galopin, uh, a bunch of water came through the air vents. These things that you see here. Now technically there exists uh, some little caps that fit in there, but couldn't find them, so I decided to make my own. And it looks something like this. I'm hoping they'll work. I just uh, used some uh, foam from this uh, knee pad uh, thing that I bought at the Home Depot store. Cut out three circles for the three air vents and uh, put a little bit of rope on them, a little washer, and I can just plug up my uh, air vents this way. Whenever I think that there's going to be some heavy seas and uh, water's going to come over the top of the deck, I'll just stick these in just like that. And there we go. A little creative engineering. It's one thing I am okay at is creating things and I'm not so great at uh, electrics and diesel engines, but I can do little things like that. So it worked out just fine. One of my neighbors dropped by and I was telling him about my problem with my um, uh, kitchen fan that wasn't working. And uh, I went and bought a new one and unfortunately it doesn't fit. So I was telling this to my neighbor, Simon, and uh, he asked me to take out the old fan and we took apart the motor. I didn't think we could and took it all apart and he looked at it and he's like, hey, it's fine. Your brushes are good and everything's good. It should be working. Just need to clean it out and polish it a little bit and it should work. And why should I trust Simon? Well, it turns out he's an electrical engineer and that's his job. So, <laughs> 
I'm gonna give it a try and so far it looks you know like it's doable it's a good little project and um, maybe I can return the other fan that I got 60 euros so it could be a good good save I have a feeling this isn't gonna work because there's a couple the brass or the copper has been scraped off or taken off and there's not a layer beneath it so I'm afraid that when the engine stops and the brushes or one of the brush it's isolated on that the current doesn't go through and it won't spin and I think that's what's been going wrong because it works sometimes doesn't work other times and I think that's probably it so I'm gonna test this out before I completely put it back together and see how it functions just hook it up directly to the battery and see what happens As I suspected, it's not gonna work. So since I couldn't uh, get that uh, motor going 100%, it was kind of like Russian roulette or just basic uh, roulette. So I decided to cut this old um, casing and use it to adapt to this fan. This fan's uh, exhaust hole here was just a bit too big and it wouldn't fit in the uh, area on the back under the cabin bunk there so I thought why don't I just try to adapt it and try to fit it in and I know it looks a little weird a little wonky a little unprofessional and and some people out there that are really good do-it-yourselfers like Mads for Sale Life for example will probably cringe at this but I don't give a rat's ass because it goes in the back under the cabin bunk way underneath it there and no one's gonna ever see this thing so as long as it functions that's what matters to me I did it my little uh, my little kitchen fan works and uh, I'm really pleased it was a pain in the ass to get it all set up back here and uh, doesn't look great but it works, and that's what matters. I'm really psyched about this. Wanted to fix this for a long time, and I finally did it. All right. Now I can make food without sneaking up the place as much and leaving greasy deposits everywhere. So the problem on my alternator was this fuse. And I found this solution. So I'm gonna order one online. And but meanwhile, I'll put this in because I'd rather have a fuse than nothing at all. Right now, I have nothing at all that's working, but just in case, I'd rather have that. So that was the problem. Now it's charging, everything's cool. That was great relief. The alternator problem had taken a while to remedy, but now it's done. It seems that my water intake to cool the engine, Simone, was weak. So I dove under and brushed some of the growth out of the grill. And there's more. Sometimes some very small problems can have a big impact. Well, today looks like it may be a good day. <clears throat> I received something in the mail, which uh, I was greatly looking forward to. It was a little repair kit for my computer. My fan has stopped working in my little uh, iMac, uh, iBook Air, whatever. It was making this buzzing noise and, and now it's just kind of stuck. And what I think happened is that I put a packet of this silica in a bag <clears throat> in which I put my uh, computer to keep it dry and keep humidity under control. Well, one of these broke open and I was stuck with all these little tiny little pearls, tiny little beads of uh, silica. And they were in a bag and I wasn't too worried about it. And you know, I think one of them got into the computer and got stuck in a fan. I'm hoping that is the problem and I can take it out and uh, the fan will turn again because I'm desperately need my computer to be editing these videos. That said, I knew it. I knew I had a little thing in there stuck. All right, now I need to clean this fan out. 
Well, it wasn't my lucky day. I fucked up. God damn it. When I pulled out the fan, I didn't pull it out cleanly, and I pulled out this little connection piece. I'm soldered here. Time to think about a new computer. Damn it! Damn it! I should have just. Oh, this was just slipped out, and I pulled it out wrong. Didn't take my time to do this correctly. I'm mad at myself. All right, little Mac. Looks like I'm gonna have to work you gentle until I think of another solution. I'll make you a Mac Mini. Put it here. Have this as a, another. Not worked it so much. All right, so there it is. I got a cool toolbox, but I failed to. And I found my problem, which was exactly what I thought, that stupid little bead, but I didn't solve my problem. Now I have a fan that I can't connect. Nice. Good job, Al. Now that the alternator was fixed, I needed to get out. Try to do this more often now that uh, Galapan is doing well. Keep going out as much as possible to to practice and get used to them. And doing much better, man. I think I know how to trim my sails better. I know how to, you know, control them. How many reefs to take in. Now I'm cruising back downwind, nice and easy, back to Marina Lanzarote. Canary Islands are awesome because uh, you have this great constant wind all the time and uh, it's a great place to practice. Somebody told me that there's some um, you know, world champions that come here in, in these waters to practice. It's, it's so, so good and steady. Anyways, this is it man. Getting prepared for the big, big winded voyage and part of the winded voyage is to prepare, right?
Experience is what I need. And the Canary Islands are perfect for me at this point in my voyage. It's hot, there's no one in sight, just me, Galopin, in great conditions. There was another sensation I needed to experience. I gave naked sailing a try. As Chris Christopherson wrote in Me and Bobby McGee, freedom is just another word for nothing else to lose. (laughs) 